lab number 252. In this lab, we will uh, focus on quick win scenario for mobile first platform 8.0 beta and Ionic 2 beta project. We will use uh, TypeScript and uh, in order to start working with mobile first uh, platform plugins for hybrid development, we will first need to install Ionic 2 beta and then create Ionic project. So let's start with an installation. So first of all, let's open the terminal window and type npm install minus g and then uh, we will type ionic at beta. This command should be launched uh, with sudo and let's also install two other things. First one will be gulp uh, that will be needed to watch changes and uh, actually work with TS files, uh, TypeScript files. And the second will be uh, CDV Live. This is the Cordova Live Reload project uh, that was created by Carl Santana. And this one knows about mobile first platform security. So when we will be launching this Live Reload, it will actually allow us to launch Live Reload on the physical device or on emulator. And once we change the code, automatically the app will be changed on mobile device. The same can be done with the pure Ionic, but without knowing about mobile first platform stuff and security. So uh, actually just click enter and enter a password for IBM sudo. So it's double Q with uppercase, double Q with lowercase, one, two, three, four, and press enter. So now when our installation uh, completed, uh, we can actually navigate inside dev workspaces folder and create a new folder for our hybrid messenger project. Uh, let's call it HM, like hybrid messenger, and navigate inside it. Now we can create actually a project using Ionic start command, the name of the project, in our case it will be uh, hybrid messenger and then we will also specify that uh, we will use tabs template so we'll have tab based navigation system prepared from this template we will specify uh, that we will be using version 2 the way how to do it is like this and uh, we will also specify that we will be using TypeScript project uh, so Ionic 2 allows you to use the pure JavaScript or use TypeScript and we will work with the TypeScript approach and then just click enter. That's it. Uh, we don't need to create account so we can specify no as an answer. And that's it. Now we uh, should have the hybrid messenger folder and we can open it by uh, first of all uh, navigating inside and second typing Ionic serve. So we will launch Ionic Live Reload server that will uh, right now show us how the application is looking like. Uh, this error that you are seeing with promise DTS can be ignored. Uh, this is the well-known Angular uh, 2 uh, beta error. So they know about it and they're going to fix, but it won't stop us uh, from working on the app. It won't have any um, kind of, we won't have any issues with it later on. So uh, as you can see, this is our live reload. Let's have device emulation to see how the app will be looking, for example, on iPhone 6. So this is our app. We have tabs based system with three tabs, tab one, tab two, and tab three. So um, in this quick win series, we will focus actually on tab one and we will create a rating page. So basically this rating page will uh, first of all grab a list of uh, users and display their ratings. So like messengers delivering packages and by each delivered package they earn some kind of points 
and based on those points that they earned, uh, we constructing the rating page who uh, earned most points uh, and, and, and so on. So basically we will see the picture there, then the name and then the position like one, two, three in the rating and it's pretty simple. Um, and in this lab we will grab that data, we will display it, uh, in later labs we will add security and uh, then finally we will focus on uh, push messaging. So uh, right now we have the Ionic app uh, as is and uh, first of all let's do the following thing. Uh, let's uh, open our application code in our studio. For this lab series we will be using Visual Studio Code from Microsoft and uh, see how the live reload works. So uh, let's open the Visual Studio Code uh, from our main menu. And uh, yeah, during the first line, it will open the browser page with information on how great the product is. Uh, anyway, so let's go back to Visual Studio Code and open folder. And this folder will be dev uh, workspaces HM. So now you can see that we have inside our folder um, actually the hybrid messenger project that we just created. So uh, what, what's happening inside is, first of all, um, there was a change in the way how the app is structured. And this www folder is not the folder uh, we will mostly work with, because here you will see uh, mostly compiled stuff, uh, like inside build folder. Uh, but the things that we will be working on, the development will be happening in application folder. So this app folder, uh, will be the thing that we will focus on uh, and all the files that we had in Ionic uh, 1 previously with, with JS extensions so that now they are uh, exist with, with TS extension so uh, for TypeScript just for simplification uh, of, of understanding any valid uh, JavaScript code is the valid TypeScript code but um, any code that has Ionic 1 specific things like scope and so on is not valid uh, code for Ionic 2 because the concepts are really changed. Um, we don't have scope, we don't have controllers anymore and, and we um, basically have only components now. Um, but you will get used to that uh, quite quickly. So let's start with exploration of what we have here. So we still have index.html, uh, the file from which the app is actually launching. And uh, from this file, we are uh, launching the Ionic app. This is like a template in which we will uh, put our application later on. Uh, our uh, first stop is actually the app.ts file. This is an analog of app.js file in Ionic 1. So this is where the application config is stated. Right here we can import um, kind of providers, we can still call it services if it will be easier. And this um, actually app specify the way how the navigation will happen. So for example you can see that the template here uh, will be like this and we will start with, with the root page. And the root page in our case is taken from the tabs page. So the way how tabs pages works in uh, particularly this app is first of all we are importing this tab page uh, from uh, page pages tabs tabs so you can see that inside pages we have three pages representing our tabs and we also have tabs with two files tabs ts and tabs html so tabs ts are responsible for injecting those three pages as tabs and also responsible for specifying who will be uh, actually the the root so you see that tab one root uh, is equal to page one, tab two is equal to page two and, and, and so on. So if we need to add more pages, this is exactly the file where we will be doing that. Uh, tabs HTML is the simple HTML file representing how the tabs will be looking like icons and, and so on. So uh, what else? Uh, the page itself uh, looks um, the, in the following way. We have a TypeScript file 
Uh, this can be an analog uh, in understanding of Ionic 1 uh, controllers. So uh, we have a page, uh, in this case it's called component, which has a template. Uh, template in our case is HTML file. It also has the class page 1 in which we will write our code. And it also has a CSS file, uh, so uh, this is not pure CSS, uh, but anyway, this is, will be a place where we'll be typing the CSS code uh, and uh, even more things. And uh, we also finally have an HTML file in which we have our template. So this is, looks almost the same way as it was in Ionic 1. Uh, just some directives and the way how we were writing them are now changed. Um, also, we have a Thames folder from which uh, we can uh, import different SCSS files from different places. So, for example, you have this core SCSS file uh, which imports uh, SCSS from each page. And uh, we also have variables. Remember, previously we were needed to type command Ionic setup SAS to uh, set up it, and then we had variables file in which we changed all those colors. So in this case, everything is by default right here. So let me change the screen resolution. I mean the size of, of my browser, so you will see a little bit better way. So uh, this is our application. And uh, the live reload works in a way that as soon as we are changing something, for example, on this HTML, it will update our application uh, to, to uh, the latest version. The trick is that uh, now it's not direct update of the files uh, because we're not uh, directly working with www folder. As you remember, we're working with uh, app folder. And then uh, we have the watch command, uh, watch task actually, that's uh, checking the files in app folder and automatically uh, building them and pushing to a build folder. What does it mean build? Uh, it means that uh, when the files come into a build folder, we don't have any more TS files because browser doesn't know how to uh, read them. We have actually the several files in JavaScript formats and also the map file. Um, and those are combined uh, files from our TS. So this is like uh, compiled and concatenated file with everything that we wrote in those uh, TS files. So for example, this is from, from page one, as you can see. So uh, this is the way how it uh, works with Ionic 2 beta version right now. So the only thing that it doesn't know, it doesn't know about our mobile first platform stuff. So live reload from Ionic won't work as soon as we will add plugins for mobile first platform. And uh, we will go into uh, solve that using the common line interface from mobile first platform 8.0. So uh, let's go back to our terminal and uh, first of all, open new tab. So installation will be split into two steps. First step uh, is to add a platform, um, Android platform, I mean. So for that, we need to type uh, command Cordova platform add and then type Android because currently we don't have any platforms in newly created project. So now you can see that um, Cordova platform was added. And the second thing is to install actually the plugins. They can be installed in two different ways. The first way is to catch them from uh, actually the repository of Cordova plugins because they are in, in registry and you are able to fetch them by just typing a name, for example, Cordova plugin MFP. Uh, the second option is to install them uh, offline. And in order to uh, do that, so we need to download them and we can do it from mobile first platform uh, server. So uh, because we will anyway need to launch the server, let me show you how to do it uh, using uh, those offline versions. So first of all, we will open uh, one more tab and navigate inside opt uh, then IBM MFP. This is the location 
where you installed uh, actually the mobile first platform dev kit so the server uh, for developer edition and uh, from here we can launch the server using command run a sash it will just type run a sash and press enter the server will be launched but when we will close this terminal window uh, the server will be stopped so in order to keep it running we will launch this command using no hub so just type no hub then uh, actually run a sash and this character and we will run it and all output will be going to no hub out so actually we can tail that file using command tail uh, minus f it will be updating so we'll do it live uh, and then no hub out file and here we have the server logs that we were able to follow and let's wait until it will be started actually So as you can see, the application started and uh, we can uh, actually open the browser. Let's have one more window, this time the big one. And navigate to localhost, port is 9080 and uh, the URL is MFP console. So URL is changed. Uh, nowadays, by default, you have MFP console URL. The username and the password still the same as in previous releases. So admin, admin by default. So now you can see that we are inside the operations console. Uh, we are in a dashboard and right from here, we can click on get starter code and uh, then navigate to tools. And down there we will see the client SDKs. So those are the plugins that I talked about and we will need to download a version for Cordova. So just click download and it will be downloaded. So now we can go back to our terminal, um, open one more tab and navigate uh, to downloads page. And from downloads page you should be able to see this MFP Cordova. Uh, that was downloaded so we can unpack it uh, using command unzip and then providing the file name and once uh, unpacking uh, will be finished we will be able to see that we have two folders one called plugins the second one called templates so templates are the template projects uh, that you can uh, start with so not from scratch uh, the plugins actually contains all our uh, plugins inside so Cordoba MFP, JSON store, uh, push and um, actually uh, MFP itself plus FIPS so this is to be compliant with uh, US security standards uh, but we won't be installing it so uh, actually we finished unpacking we can close this tab and go back to the tab uh, where we were installing the Cordova platform and now we will instead of platform install the plugin so the command will look like Cordova plugin adds and then uh, either the name either the URL uh, the URL can be actually passed to file system in our case uh, it will be like this so uh, downloads folder from our home folder then plugins folder and we will start with Cordova plugin MFP As you can see, dependency uh, plugins are also installed. Next step for us is the JSON store. And the final one is MFP push. Just like that. Now when uh, plugins are installed, the next step we need to do is actually to make sure that server knows about our app before we will be trying to connect to it. So that can be done uh, using the command line interface for mobile first platform 8.0 beta. So it is MFP dev, it's not um, MFP only anymore, so MFP dev. And then the command is app register. So this command is used to register this pure uh, Cordova project that was created using Ionic uh, command line interface, but still this is the pure Cordova project plus Ionic libraries inside. And this MFP dev app register command is used to register app on the server. 
So one is launched, uh, we are uh, actually connecting the local server, as you can see, because uh, we didn't set any properties for a server URL or something like that. So by default, we're connecting to local server and uh, to runtime MFP. And we should uh, already be able to see if we'll refresh our uh, operations console that the app is here registered. So yeah, as you can see, we have here our hybrid application for Android version uh, 0.01. So uh, from here, we actually, now when the registration is complete, need to uh, do several things. First, we need to run Cordova uh, Prepare, as, as it said. Uh, the next step for us is to uh, get all the things that uh, was created within the registration using MFP dev app. Uh, pull command and then uh, we need to do mfp uh, dev app push command to push our application uh, on the server with the latest settings so this is how it usually happening once, once you change some uh, settings instead of doing the deploy like in old ways uh, you're typing mfp uh, app push command so now um, the thing that you should understand, if you will try to use um, work light API inside the app, the Ionic Life Reload server won't understand it uh, because he doesn't know about uh, that mobile first tab uh, inside the config XML file. So if you will open the studio, you may notice that in config XML there were added things related to mobile first. And all of that uh, is just not understandable uh, by uh, the live reload from uh, pure Ionic. So we will combine two worlds. Uh, one world will be from Ionic still to actually watch for all the changes inside app folder and prepare uh, using Ionic um, way how it is done by default those app bundle JS uh, files. And uh, that is a command called watch and we can uh, run it uh, by just, uh, instead of launching live reload, by just typing gulp watch. So it will uh, run the watch task and all the files uh, will be watched inside the, those app folder. And uh, once we will save something, it will uh, start, actually it will initiate the build process and update those files inside the www folder. And let's open the browser once again. And the second thing that we can do is we can actually launch live reload from mobile first platform uh, using the command MFP dev app preview. So as it was before, we are able to select either it will be previewing the browser or using mobile browser simulator. So for now, we will focus on pure browser preview. So this is our application with, uh, again, live reload consists of two parts. The first part is our watch command uh, that watching for changes in um, app folder and the second is the live reload from mobile first platform command line interface that knows about all of those stuff. Um, actually you can ignore uh, the errors that are there now so no content a security policy you can see that there is um, actually a warning uh, in the command line interface that says you that you can ignore this. Uh, Fav icon uh, can be ignored this is the web browser stuff it can be simply ignored and uh, Cordova JS uh, will be uh, 404 during the development uh, because actually uh, this is the browser based development and uh, then not uh, within the real device not emulator so we'll have that error for now everything else like well in it and and so on are related to uh, mobile first platform calls so it's already have the libraries inside so let's test our uh, live reload. I will open uh, the file page one HTML and you should do the same and replace some text. Let's have it something like live 
reload works text and see that it's actually working uh, just as we expected. The next step for us is actually as we were doing it uh, before in, in previous lab series for previous lab uh, from previous uh, versions of mobile first platform we need to catch uh, well uh, in its event so actually it will be uh, the function welcome on init that will be called after uh, libraries init complete and since from then we can start calling uh, mobile first uh, API so um, get some resources from from a server and so on so before that we cannot use the API because uh, libraries are not loaded yet and the way how we will um, grab that is actually pretty similar to the way we were doing it before in, in 7.1. So we'll open the www folder and open the index HTML. And right inside the head, uh, we will define a script tag. And inside this script tag, we will define this function. We have common init. And inside the common init, first of all, uh, let's do some kind of logging. Something like um, we have common init called. And then uh, we will define the event. This event uh, will be actually caged uh, inside our uh, TypeScript code inside app.ts uh, and only since then we will start loading pages with the code uh, that actually use our API. So we will share this event from pure uh, JavaScript to um, actually Ionic uh, 2 and Angular 2. And we will do it in a similar way how we were doing it in previous release. So we have events and uh, we'll create new custom event. Uh, let's call it something like WL uh, init finished. And what we will do is we will dispatch this event. and also do some kind of login uh, to understand that we dispatched the event. Just like that. So let's see what's happening right now. You can see that we cache the common init. Uh, so inside this function, our login um, console log command was called and we also were able to dispatch the event and now it's time to actually catch that event inside our Ionic 2 code. So let's open app.ts and we will need to catch that event. Uh, we cannot catch it uh, with the thing like add event listener because in that case we'll have issues with uh, variables defined in Ionic 2 way or functions on the same level or le level above. So in order not to have uh, issues with the, well, we can call it scope in old style way. Um, so we, we uh, need to work with the way how it's defined usually in Angular 2. So for that, we will use the thing called renderer. And first of all, to use it, we will need to import it. This is the standard way to uh, actually inject some uh, dependencies inside our component. Uh, so in this case, the name is renderer uh, and uh, we can inject it from uh, the pass angular to core. So in order to use this renderer, we need to add a reference to it. So we can do it here in constructor. This constructor sync is what will be launched uh, when we uh, will actually init this uh, class when we will go inside. Uh, it will run this constructor. So everything that is inside uh, will be called automatically. 
So here we can add reference, uh, let's call it render, uh, or let's can call, call it the same renderer and reference to renderer. Just like that. So uh, now let's actually uh, define that listener. So the way how to do it is to type render and then I use listen global and the part of it API. Um, and we'll actually need to say what we are listening and from where. So we'll start from where. Uh, we are listening document for events called well uh, init finished. And uh, then actually we need to specify the callback what will happen uh, when we will catch that event. So the way how to specify uh, analog to then uh, that was previously uh, used in, for example, uh, first version of, of Ionic is to use this syntaxes and uh, then actually to uh, define and code uh, which will be called as a callback uh, to this uh, listener. So when the event will be called, we will get inside. So first of all, let's have some login. Uh, for example, let's say something like uh, WL init finished event received. And let's see how it works. So once we are saving it, as you remember, uh, it should launch live reload and uh, we should be able to see the changes. And yes, you can see that we got those things and we uh, received well init finished event received. So uh, after it's actually received, uh, we can call some kind of function that will start working with uh, our uh, mobile first uh, platform API. What I mean by that is before uh, this event received, we shouldn't uh, use any API commands inside our pages. We will type them in page TS in separate services. In this case, we will call them providers and so on. Uh, and the way to prevent uh, it from being loaded is the change the way how navigation is made. So uh, for, for example, here by default, once we um, opening the app TS, and as you remember, this is the starting file and the define the config for our app. We are seeing that right away we are uh, setting the root page equal to tabs page. So we can prevent that action and um, actually just define that the root page will be type any. This is like a variable declaration. And uh, once we receive this call, uh, we can call some kind of uh, function, let's call it uh, MFP init, for example. And uh, this one uh, will actually set uh, the root page to tabs. So let's define this function. This is the way how to do it in uh, Ionic 2 Angular 2 style. And right here we can say now that this uh, root page uh, will be equal to tabs page as it was before. So uh, we will need to verify that it works in the way how we uh, design it. So let's go to uh, page one TS and inside the constructor just add the login just to uh, verify when the page was loaded, something like page one in it. So let's save this uh, app, I mean page one TS file. And you may notice that uh, page one in it is called only after uh, we actually received uh, WL in it finished. So um, this is the way how we will work from now. Uh, so we will uh, able to enter the page and start navigating only after uh, libraries uh, will be loaded. We don't need to do anything like well, uh, client connect that was used previously to uh, connect to server because the server connection will be established during the first call when we were trying to get some data. Um, and basically uh, that will be done in the next lab. 
So uh, on this tab, our current lab is finished. Thank you.